Hi everyone, let's continue production function. Short run production function I have already completed in my previous videos. And now long run production function that is return to scale. Why we are calling return to scale I will explain you because here is entire scale is keep on changing. Scale means all four factors of production are variable. Nothing is fixed in long run. So a change in scale means that all input or factors are varied and here is in the same proportion keeping factor proportion cost. That means suppose I am taking example of you are making a cake, you are preparing a cake. For cake, whatever is the like wheat flour, sugar, and uh, that one is butter, whatever in the proportion is required, in the same proportion, suppose you are preparing one pound cake and now somebody had given you task, you are going to prepare five pound cake. So accordingly, it's not uh, uh, like it's it's not possible. One ingredient you are increasing a lot and other ingredients you are not increasing. Because whatever is the for the preparation of the cake, whatever is the proportion is required in the same manner you are going to increase in the same proportion you are going to increase, then you can get five pound cake instead of one pound cake. So the same thing is applicable here. When the quantities of all factors are changed along a particular scale, size of the firm scale of output will change. The scale of production can be changed by installing new plant and equipment and hiring more labor and other factors input. That is why we are calling it return to scale. Because law variable proportion we are calling it that was a short run production function we were calling this return to factor because in the short run production function we were only changing some few factors rest of the factors were constant but we are calling long run production function as return to scale why because entire scale we are changing nothing is fixed everything is varied so return to scale measures the increase in output as all the inputs are increased in the same proportion. There is an actual practice increase in all inputs say 100%. We are increasing inputs. So there are three categories, one, two and three. A more than proportionate increase in the output that is greater than 100% here is increase in the output that is known as increasing return to scale. But when it is just proportionate increase in the output means 100% increase in the output because you have increased 100% increase in input. So that is known as constant return to scale. But third one is less than proportionate increase in output or less than 100% increase in output decrease return to scale. So one by one we will discuss all three categories of return to scale, increasing return to scale, constant return to scale and decreasing return to scale. First is increasing return to scale means increasing specialization of labor. Increase in the scale of operation leads to training and specialization, eventually expertise by repetitive experience. Second thing is use of more specialized machines. So productivity will be greater. But capacity often large and indivisible, therefore not possible for small output or very expensive. Suppose we are talking about increasing specialization of labor. There are two specialized there are two specialized person in the department. One is specialized in marketing and the one is specialized in finance. And suppose for the for two days, we are interchanging their role. And marketing person, if we will talk about marketing person um, uh, who was selling, let's say 20 units in a day of any product and uh, or hypothetical product. And... Uh, 
now marketing person he is sitting on the finance person seat and finance person he is now on the marketing seat and now we have given this task fine he can do it but because he is not expert in marketing so what he can do he can sell out might be eight units in a day or 10 units in a day but he is not as good as marketing person he was selling 20 units in a day so that is why that this is the increasing return to scale means less inputs and more output so here is that c is external and internal economies of a scale i'm going to explain you what do you mean by external economies what do you mean by internal economies here is internal external economies means if something we are economizing due to external factors due to external factors let's say somebody is giving you if you are doing bulk buying and they are giving you some heavy discount so you can do that and government policy has been changed or there is a reduction in the gst or there is some other factors due to policy changes or some other like vendor is giving you some special offers let's say petrol and diesel prices has been reduced so just because of this your transportation cost is reduced and internal economies means that means inside the organization those are the factors influencing production inside the organization let's say suppose your production is lined up and uh, your raw material is finished so that is the fault of the those are maintaining those are managing this stock and all looking after raw material so labor would be idle in the organization they will be sitting here because you are paying them wages per day wages or whatever and uh, they are sitting idle and they are not giving any output so ultimately what would happen that is our fault so we should organize we should um, uh, line up all those things whether we have uh, uh, sufficient raw material or not so these are the, this is the one of the example of internal economies of scale next we come to the constant return to scale constant return to scale means whatever if let's say we are giving 100 percent input i am giving you that is 100 percent input and we are getting we are giving 100 percent input and we are getting 100 percent output so 100 percent output so 100 percent output means that is constant return to scale so proportional change in input matched by proportional change in output increasing return cannot go on indefinitely may occur in activities where factors of production are perfectly divisible example doubling output by setting up an identical new plan so that is the constant return to scale and third one is diminishing return to scale diminishing return to scale let's say you are increasing 100 percent input we are 100 percent 100 percent input 100% input and equal to let's say you are getting only 80% out you're getting only 80% out so in efficiency of managing large scale proportions the problem of coordinating and controlling activities become difficult lines of information communication and decision making becomes more complex and this economies of a scale, as I said, this economies of a scale, I mean, we can divide into two categories, same way, like economies of a scale and this economies of scale in two categories. One is external, another one is internal. And same way, we are going to define external means due to due to outside the organization factors, and internal means within the organization factors outside the organization factors like government policies again i would say gst has been increased diesel and petrol prices increased government has revised taxes and all these things and i mean other things government has not now not giving any subsidy so such kind of factors that would influence economies of scale so these are increasing return to scale decreasing return to scale and constant return to scale now you can see constant whatever is the you can say on the x-axis we have taken k stands for capital l stands for labor right these are the input factors so whatever inputs we are increasing in the same manner output is also increasing you can see 
in the same manner. That is constant. When we will talk about we are giving this much of out this much of output after getting this much of this is the output and this is the input. This is the output and less input we are giving that is increasing. But decreasing you can say we are getting only this much of output and this is the input and this much of output we are getting after we are giving number of input. I mean uh, inputs are more and output is less. So these are the three situations, increasing return, decreasing and constant return. And in the same manner, you can say how we can represent this thing. I mean, uh, this one is uh, the same manner you can do that. This is the increasing, decreasing and constant return. So I hope this video is clear to you. You can understand, right? And uh, keep watching this video. Thank you. And in the next video, I'm going to cover some more aspects of econ economics and next chapter of economics. Thank you.